Hi, I'm Cheryl Purcell, and this is Sydney, the Australian Terrier. And today we're going to work on um, cutting his head in. As you can see, he has a ton of coat on him. He is a hand strip dog. And generally, <clears throat> you're going to strip from the occiput and down the back, down the front of the shoulders, down the side, and take the thigh off. You're going to leave a bib in front from underneath the collar line down. You expose the point of shoulder. <clears throat> the head, the entire ear is stripped. And we're going to do the other ear, and then we're going to strip the side of his cheek and expose that and do around his neck and get his head into, into shape. So let's start with the, this ear. We're going to finish up. We're going to pull it forward. And you can see that there's little fuzzy stuff here. We're going to take the fine stripping knife and we're going to pull it. And what you want to do is you want to strip these about every week or two to help keep that nice dark color in there. You can see some of this blonder hair that's back here now is because it's grown too long. And if we keep it nice and stripped, He'll have that nice dark color coming up, so we're going to try and get some of this softer hair here and pull it out. You want to get the hole around the edge on both sides. Now, you can clipper this on your pet dogs at home. Um, sometimes my hand strips, what I'll do is I'll clipper the inside and I'll pull the outside, or if they're really fussy about having their ears pulled, I'll take a seven blade or a 10 blade to the back of this ear um, and strip it off. You can see on this side, we haven't done this ear yet. You can see how hairy this is here. We're gonna pull the ear forward and here's the base, right? And we wanna take all the hair off around the entire base. So similar to what you would see in like a Scottish Terrier. I'm gonna pull all that off. And he's actually pretty good. Now the top of this doesn't get trimmed, so I'm using my hands to pull it out of the way so that I don't pull the wrong hair out by mistake. You lift the hair up, take your thumb, and grab and just pull. What you wanna do is you wanna pull the hair out, you don't wanna break it. If you have a knife that's too sharp, you'll split the hair in half. And that's not our goal. Our goal is to pull it out, kind of like getting your eyebrows tweezed. And you can see that this obviously doesn't hurt him. A lot of groomers are apprehensive to hand stripping because they say it hurts the dogs. Um, these dogs were made with wire coats for a reason, so that when they hunt in the woods and go in the holes after vermin, it protects them. And hand stripping originally started with them running through the briars and getting their hair caught in the bushes and then pulling out. And they would see that the fluffy coat would come out and the darker coat would grow in underneath. And as we took them to show, we started to do this manually as opposed to letting it happen naturally when they were running and hunting for game. And you can see, we're trying to get all around here. Now, you can pull with your fingers, or you can use the knife, whichever. I kind of go back and forth between both. One of the things I want to do is I want to pull in the direction that I want the hair to grow in in. So I don't want the hair to grow backwards, so I'm not pulling this way. <laughs> when I pull, I pull this way in the direction the hair is growing. So on the body here, I would pull down, I wouldn't pull up. You can see all the little pieces around the ear. And he's a little staticky. So I'm just gonna keep pushing the hair over. And I wanna trim all of this around the ear so the whole ear is trimmed around. Uh, hand stripping in general is a labor-intensive and time-consuming procedure. So usually do it in stages. Um, to do him completely from start to finish in this condition would probably take a good four hours. So we don't want to groom him for four straight hours, so we're going to do a little bit at a time. We're going to work on his head today. Maybe we'll get to his body a little bit later. What I want to do now that I have his ears trimmed out 
is I want to define the neck a little bit. So one of the tools I can use to help me with that is the Andes undercoat rake. And I like this for pulling out undercoat and not top coat. So what I'm going to do is just behind his ears, about a finger length behind, I'm just going to pull the hair out around the neck. And when you're using this tool, it's very similar to hand stripping, so you want to keep that coat tight. You don't want it to roll a lot. And one of the things that'll hurt the dog when you hand strip is if you don't hold on and you pull and you see the coat rolling, that's actually what causes pain. Not so much the stripping itself, but the rolling of the skin. So when I do underneath, I'm gonna pull nice and tight under his jaw and keep that straight. This is nice on dogs, if, even if you're gonna clipper them or use thinning shears, you can do this before you use thinning shears and it'll help give you a nice dark color on the coat. And if you clipper it, you can use it afterwards and it'll give you a nice dark color afterwards. And we're just gonna define the neck around here. So when his hair is all chalked up, he'll have a nice neck and then his head. And these guys are pretty easy because the brown and black are separate. So we're gonna pull all the brown red hair to the front and strip all the black. And once I get that to lay down and get a lot of the bulk out, I'm gonna take one of my bigger stripping knives and I'm just gonna strip a strip around here just to get this to lay down a little bit nicer. Boy. So I'm gonna pull underneath nice and tight, and I'm gonna pull up the little pieces, and I'm gonna pull. I just take my thumb and I pull little pieces at a time, and you wanna like jump around, you don't really wanna stay in one spot while you're stripping because you'll make little bald spots on them and we don't want to do that. Part that out. And he's got a pretty thick coat going on here. So he's got, well, it's kind of not single layering, but he doesn't have nice layers, okay? And what we want to do is we want to get those nice layers to start working. And hand stripping is just basically stages of hair growth. And as you can see, all these stripping knives come in different sizes. And these I borrowed from somebody else, so I'm a little unfamiliar with them, so you'll have to excuse me while I pick through. And that's one of the things about hand stripping, is you're gonna need different tools because different knives are gonna work differently on different coat textures. Which is why so many different companies make them. There we go, now we're starting to get a little bit of style going on here. Great. I'm gonna pull his ear forward so I can strip right here out. Can you lay down? No? Yeah, no? It's nice if you can train them to lay down while you're stripping because it's easier on both you and them. So now, all I wanna do is strip out the area of the neck behind the ear. Everything that's under the ear, I want to stay. I don't want to take any of this out or you're going to lose the character of the dog. I know. See if we can get a little bit more of that out with the coat, undercoat rake. And they clean out pretty easy.
You can see that's starting to lay down nice now. take my thumb and I brush it forward, I grab a section and I pull. And you're only taking little tiny pieces of hair at a time. You're not taking big gobs because you'll cut the coat. When I get <clears throat> to the area where it's a little bit sparser, then I can pull with my fingers. Or I can use a stone and pull with the stone. Which basically is like using the knife. Um, you're less likely to cut with the stone, though. Um, it does take a little bit longer, but it's good for nice detail work. And I always go back and forth with my different tools while I'm grooming. Because sometimes one will work in one area and it won't work in another. Now I'm just carting out any undercoat that's left in there to make those pieces lay flat. Mm -hmm. Now you can see that we're just starting to cut out around his neck. He needs from his shoulders back done. So all we're doing is the front around his neck. Oh boy. Anytime you're trying to get them in coat, you're going to stage it so you know which area. So we're going to do the neck, then we do this, and then we'd work our way down. For a lot of terriers, their head and tails are always the last parts to get done because everybody's always so worried about doing the back coat. I mean, you can see how pretty this is where this is all grown out now. Now, they have under here the bib, okay? So we're gonna pull down the shoulder just a little bit on this side and this side to help define the bib. I'm gonna use our undercoat rake to help get that out. I'm just gonna card that shoulder out a little bit. I need to sit to do that. <laughs> I'm gonna turn his head and I'm gonna pull the skin nice and tight. And you can see there's a cowlick line right here. Right? I don't want to I don't want to go past that line. Right? This is his point of shoulder that's as far back and as far forward. So I want to stop right there. I was told that their bodies are very similar to sporting dogs when you cut them out, and that really helped me visualize when I was stripping. So I'm gonna do a little bit of carding and a little bit of stripping at the same time. And carding's when you lay the blade flat and you just pull along, and then stripping's when you see the hair and you pull out. This is going to be all our forward, and all this is going to be in the back. You can see the nice color definition coming out between the black and the red. Boy, wait for me. What I know. So I went to the stone because I don't want to break the coat on the shoulder here. Once 
you can see how the beginning of that's starting to come out. The shoulder lay back, and if you look at this side, ah, 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 you'll be able to see that it's all full. Then we're gonna strip on this side a little bit. See if we can get that to lay down. Again, I'm gonna do the flat of the shoulder to the point of the shoulder. Pull that whole shoulder down. And I always like to check overhead and make sure that I'm pulling them down at the same length. I don't want one side to be lower than the other. At home when I strip, <clears throat> I do the same thing. I lay all my knives out and I just pick them up and put them down as I'm going along. Pull that nice and tight so it doesn't roll and hurt them. Oh boy. Yeah. You can see. Typical terrier doesn't like underneath his jaw held. Okay. We want to see how that nice neck is starting to come out. What I want to do, and bring that bib in just a little bit more. Now, a lot of sporting dogs, you see, <clears throat> will have the bib start here at the breastbone of that. Um, they're going to be right underneath here, all right, which is going to be the lead line or the collar line. So what I'm going to do. And I just need a little area in there. And I'm going to use thinning shears to cut that out um, to help me define it. And it's going to be right in here. Just about where the Adam's apple is. Okay. And it's also going to be where the underjaw comes into. Now you can pull this out or you can sh use thinning shears. Um, since he's not real keen on having his muzzle held, I'm going to use thinning shears because we don't want to upset him. Boy. You see the little colic under there? Oh boy. And that's just going to help define this nice pretty bib. The hair on the upper muzzle is trimmed right to the lip line. Ah, 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 easy. It helps define the muzzle. Oh boy. Now you can see that I'm not cutting into any of this back here. Okay, we want all that to come around. Now that I can see where the point is for underneath, it'll be a little bit easier to finish stripping in the rest of this bib. Oh boy. You can see all this here.
really what we want is just to get a nice flat lay. Okay. A lot of times, if they're getting really tired or really uh, the skin is getting irritated from plucking, you can always go to thinning shears and lay the shoulder in with thinning shears. But he's being pretty good, so we're going to try and strip from here into here. Ah. And you can see where we've cut in already in the shoulder that we want to go to. I'm just going to cart out some of the undercoat first. right through here. And I always take a little bit and then check and then take a little bit and check. It's one of those types of things where if you take out or make a hole, there's no putting it back. Of course, when you're pulling the, the skin tight, it rolls the coat so it isn't actually laying right exactly where you want it to. All right, so we have that pretty stripped down. I'm going to do, I'm going to take my thin and shears right here. I'm just going to blend that just the tiniest bit. Again, we're only doing the neck. We're not doing above the shoulders. We're just giving them a nice little pretty head for today. Of course, now I'm obsessing and pulling all the hair on his shoulders down. that down a little bit more. using the thin and shears to help me lay the line in a little quicker. And that's about one finger length behind the ear. I know it's hard to tell with the hair. If I pull all the hair away, this rough right here is about a finger length, okay? And that's where it's gonna start. So you don't wanna strip that out because when you put the cholesterol in and chalk it all up, you'll lose the back of the, the back of the bib. Now I like a nice finishing shear as opposed to a blocking shear. Um, I find that the bigger chunkers can sometimes cut into this coat and leave marks. Um, and my finished shears don't tend to do that. So, let's see. Just wanna show you, this is the shoulder that we've been working on. And then this is the opposite shoulder. You can see how the neck isn't defined yet and the shoulder's not defined. So we're gonna go ahead and work on this side for a little bit. It'd be easier if I was left-handed, then I wouldn't have to turn him around. I always find it easier once I get one side done. It helps me set my lines and I find the other side strips a little bit quicker. Um, just because I have everything all cut in and I know where it is already. I'm 
again, I want to keep checking and making sure both sides are even. We want all this pulled down. This is a magnet stripper. It's a very fine stripping knife. It's used more for carding. And it, again, it's just helping me pull out that undercoat so I can see that shoulder a little bit better. I lay it flat and I pull it along the coat. If I go like this and pull, I'm gonna cut into the coat and break it and I don't want to do that. Again, it's not the end of the world if you do. It just, it just, it just doesn't grow in the way you want it to. Uh, when you hand strip, you pull the hair out of the follicle and then a new hair grows in. When you clipper it, and if you clipper it too low, the hair actually falls below the hair follicle line and when it grows back in, it's thinner, um, which is why the texture and color changes when you clipper a dog as opposed to when you hand strip it. And if you have clients who don't want to pay for the hand stripping, you can always do thinning shears and a snap-on comb and then go over it with a stone or with a undercoat ray or even with a magnet stripper and just help stimulate it and get the color back in. As long as you don't cut too close, you should be fine. Um, again, it's hair, and cutting it in half doesn't kill it. <laughs> it, just, it just makes it what they call single layering, so it doesn't come in in stages. I've been told by many interior people that if you shave the coat, it's ruined forever. Um, and that can be true, because each coat is sep you know, each coat is different. So I have lots of clients who come with dogs that had been clippered and they want to start hand stripping them, and we work them back a little bit at a time, and we do what we call a pet strip, which is a combination of stripping and thinning and snap-on combs so that they can get the color and texture without actually having to do all the work. So now I'm just checking to make sure that the neck is pulling down the same on both sides. And you can see where he keeps dipping his head down. I only want to do a little bit at a time and then go back and check on it and make sure that I'm not making a hole and that I'm not pulling too much out. Oh boy. Hi! Hmm. You can see how the shoulder's laying down a little bit nicer than this one, so we're just gonna keep working on this for a little bit. a lot of times with these terriers if you can keep the character of the dog you should always try we'll get these Aussies in our salons a lot of times and people will tell you that they're um, Yorkie mixes which they're not <laughs> they're Australian terriers and I'm just going to reach over here and Cut that neck in a little bit. Oh boy. You can see I'm looking for that cowlick line that comes down here. Right under the ear. Go. Oh, good boy. Hmm. We're just gonna pull this side down. Just ah, 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 ah. no. Just a little bit lower. You 
We can see why his head's so hairy, because this is his least favorite thing to get done. Ah! Come here. Come. Oh, boy. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put his lead on, and we're going to try and set it right at that mark that we made earlier. You can see he's starting to look a little bit more like an Australian Terrier and a little, little less like a hairy beast. Huh. Now you can see behind here, I have a little bit more hair on this side than I do on this side. So I'm just gonna pull it out to even it up. What I'm going to do is expose the whole back of that ear. I pulled this one out, so we still have a little bit more hair back here we're going to pull out. What? I know it looks like I'm torturing him, but I'm not. But he's being very good. Boy. And what I'm doing is I'm checking to make sure that the bib is the same on both sides. Boy. Now, here, we've got the neck cut out. We're gonna do the top of the head. There's a line that goes from the eye to the ear. And there's actually a little black dot. Can you see that there? Okay. Michelle Evans told me it's called a thumbprint, and now I know why. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna strip out just a tiny thin line right here to make this more noticeable, and that's gonna help distinguish the bottom from the top. Oh boy. Just taking little tiny pieces at a time to expose that. Nice. And you see that starting to come out there? And you can see how this is really clearly defined in the top of the muzzle from the bottom of the muzzle. Now all this 
right here on the cheek is going to be pulled back a little bit till I just get to the beginning of the ruff. See where it's starting to curl. Oh, so go hardy. Oh boy. pieces here that are like super super long you want about the top third of the ear to stick out in the top of this messy little head of theirs so we're just gonna go <laughs> and pick through the really long pieces on top Not supposed to be a Westie. Mm. I'm pulling out hair up here. It's gonna help the coarser hair come in and make his hair stand up. Give him his natural little terrier look here. Shake it! Hey! No? Usually if you blow in their ears, they'll shake their head for you. So you can see just how by doing a little bit of work here, it started to define that side of the head. So we're just gonna do a little bit more carding back here. Give him a nice pretty head. Oh, good boy. layers here that actually are making like eyelashes. What I want to do is I want this all to layer in just like it would layer in if I had hand stripped. I'm going to strip the cheeks out a little bit. I know. Good boy. Boy. All right, now we're gonna work on a little thumbprint on this side. And it's in here, I can barely see it in there. There, it's starting to come right there. Just want to pull the hair around it and expose that black thumbprint, which I'm not going to lie, I didn't know about until uh, somebody told me. So um, I knew that it had been stripped, but I didn't know there was an actual mark that you were looking for. So this makes it much easier for me and you at home <laughs> to find it. Lashes out of the way, and I'm stripping the hair underneath his eye. I know that probably looks horrible, huh? There we go. Ah, you're 
you're starting to come. You're starting. This is a really fine stone on a handle, and that's really nice to um, do some detail work on his face up here. I don't want to strip it down so it looks like a poodle hit face, but I want to define the back skull and the muzzle. Now these pieces on the side obviously are longer because they go into the bib, but I want them to be even if one, one side is longer than the other. <laughs> we want to pull those pieces out. Take a little bit of cholesterol. And rub it together. And I'm gonna put it in his hand like I'm gelling his head up. I think we did too much cholesterol. Ah! <laughs> what? <laughs> you want to lick that? You want to lick that? <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to tease that up a little bit. And we can see how it's really long up here. We don't want that westy type of look. So I'm going to go back through. I'm just going to pull some of that out. shakes, the easier it is for me to see what needs to be pulled out. And I'm just using the stone for this. You can see how he's still got that car and Westy type of head look to him. So we're just going to keep pulling out along that line. Just soften it up.
ที่ประเฉาเนาะ That's not paper towel. Oh, that's pop. So, huh. okay, I'll live. Just a little too much cholesterol. If I was home and I over cholesterol, I'd throw a little chalk in it or powder. They don't have any with me. Lance is on a mission to find us some. No. Oh. <laughs> Crazy man. <laughs> All right. So when his ears are pricked up, I only want about a top third of it sticking out, and you can see how much more hair is up here when I hold that up. So I'm just gonna keep pulling till I can get to a more reasonable length here. He's a crazy man. Mm. <laughs> Now you can see how much easier this is to do if they come in on a regular basis and they don't wait until they're all overgrown to get stripped out. Little like an Ewok, buddy. Mm -hmm. <gasps> Get him, Yeah, we're not going mohawk. You know, you see a dog like this and you think that there's not a lot of work to it and surprisingly, there's an awful lot of detail work done to it. So next time you see one, you'll appreciate it more. Have a little fringe in front of their ears. I know. He still has a big piece behind here that I'm trying to get out. And a lot of times with these terriers, their heads don't come together until you start to do the finish work with your product. And even in my salon, I'll put 
product on the Westies and stuff too, just so I can see what their heads look like up. When he picks his ears up, you can see those big pieces. And those are all, that's all the hair that's actually on his ear that needs to be pulled out. Just trying to get some shape around his face. The top of his head's still really long, so I just want to pick through until he doesn't look like a car interior anymore. That is much less carnish. <laughs> oh. Ready? It's always nice when they find something to look at, huh? There we go. All right, that is the beginning of your Australian Terrier head. find what I'm looking for. The Northwest Grooming Show. What? I never know what to do with this breed. The Northwest Grooming Show. <laughs> 